You know what's an amazing combination in R&B that I feel that they should do a lot more? Bryson Tiller and her. And as a fan of both of them, but most particularly Bryson Tiller, I think it's an amazing combination. So I want to break down a beat today that I feel would fit Bryson Tiller and her. Let's go and do that. You know, as big of a Bryson Tiller fan as I am, and like I said, I'm a pretty big Bryson Tiller fan. This what happened when I think about you. I get in my feeling. I really don't do a lot of Bryson Tiller type beats on this channel anymore. And high key, that's super funny because Trap Soul is the very reason why I got back into producing and why I even started making R&B in the first place. So I wanna change that today. I wanna delve with y'all into this dope beat. I wanna break down the sample, explain my drum choices, and let's just all catch a vibe together. Feel me? Let's head into FL. All right, beautiful people. Welcome back into FL Studio, and it's a beautiful day to break down this Bryson Tiller and her type B. So I wanna introduce y'all to Lo-Fi Midnight. It's a plugin. I copped it as a part of a bundle the other day for about $19. It comes with Lo-Fi Midnight, which provides just patches for pads and keys and bass it comes with lo-fi rhythm and it also has like a drum sequencer and it's super dope so if the bundle is still on sale at the time of watching this video go and cop it it's ideal for you know kind of late night r b sounds so as for the chord progression let me break it down i wrote this chord progression in the most vanilla key of them all c major y'all really gotta stop discriminating against c major it's a decent key it's the bread and butter of course so what i'm starting off here is my sixth degree and as you know the sixth degree in the major scale is a minor chord so i'm rocking with an A minor ninth chord right here and I'm dropping down to my fifth degree uh, which is actually supposed to be a dominant uh, seven chord but I went ahead I turned it into a G9 sus four chord right here so I'm dropping on down to my third degree which is in the major scale is also a minor chord. However, I took this third, I pitched it up one semitone, turning it into a dominant chord. So what I'm rocking with is an E dominant seven chord. However, you can actually see this, and this is a sharpened nine. So let me just demonstrate that. So this is a dominant seven flat nine chord. This is a uh, dominant nine chord, and this is a dominant seven with a sharp nine, just like that. So from that dominant seven with a sharp nine, we are moving to my fourth degree, which in the major scale is a major chord. So I'm rocking with this F major ninth chord right here. And I'm ending the phrase with a little bit of tension with this G9 sus four chord right here. And I actually think it's a flat nine. It is actually a flat nine. So. And hey, if you're interested in seeing if this chord progression works for you, check out the first comment underneath the video. I got the link to the chord progression right there. So after that, it was a simple matter of layering. So I added two layers, another patch from the Lo-Fi instrument called the Peaceful Images. I think that's a pad. And I layered it with a piano from Contact, which I'm guessing is the Gentleman, of course. Now there's a little thing that I want to touch on, of course, because you can see that I've got these little notes right here. So essentially, See what I did, I just played the chords sustain and I just took the slicing tool and I just drew a line right here, which uh, automatically slices it. So you get kind of a cool lick ish thing um, right there, some kind of cool strummed lick kind of thing. I don't really know how to put it, but I liked it. It's kind of like grace notes at the end of each chord. I really liked it. So I did the same for this pattern. Actually, I didn't. I'm a fucking liar. I didn't. Um, but I did do it kind of in this pattern. You can see it right here. And you really have to time those slices because sometimes it sounds really just jointed and it really doesn't make any sense. So just play around with the slice option if you want to add some cool spice to your chords. So this is what the sample is sounding right right now.
So I already had something cool and vibey going on, which I wanted to expand upon with some vocal samples. I took out two vocal samples from Splice. I just randomly looked for them. I set it to the key that I'm working in or the relative minor. Uh, you can see that I actually started in A flat major. So, you know, um, and I supplemented this with this vocal sample that I was playing in reverse. So let me just solo these two so y'all can hear them. So it's really hard to discern them in context, so I'm going to just play the entire sample so y'all can get an idea. I wasn't done making this sample, I was really enjoying myself, so I add, decided to add two final layers, and these two final layers are of course a couple of strings from the Solina V. Uh, I regularly incorporate strings and I usually take them from the pad section or the string section of the Solina of course. And I decided to supplement that with this patch, the Alpha Piano from the Emulator 2 V. And I decided to place these two little accents in my sample. And to me, that's how I got the full sample. That's when I thought, this is complete, we are good to go. can't sleep on the processing. So can we talk about the processing a little bit? My processing was actually, relatively speaking, pretty minimal. So on the first patch, the from the Love 5 Midnight, all I, all I really did was just some pretty hefty EQ cuts. I thought that it was a pretty boomy patch, so I really needed to filter out a lot to make sure that my bass was coming through properly. Um, the Lo-Fi Keys pad, which is this uh, patch right here, I actually did a lot more processing. EQ cuts, of course. I added shaper box for that gated pumping effect, of course. Cool roll, widen it just a little bit, making it a bit more wavy, and crystallizer, of course, getting that real nice mangled delay at the end. Absolutely love that, makes my path sound super spacey. The piano, nothing too special, just an EQ cut. I was fucking around with the tape mellify just a little bit. I decided to take it off because there was no place for that decay lo-fi effect in my beat. The Selena, Nothing too special, a little bit of cuts of course, and the Vox, I heavily processed them of course, one a little bit more than the other as you can see here, and the difference being just crystallizer. Eventually, all I did was bus it out, uh, wait, I gotta watch my, I sent it to a bus, Man, I do miss the bus challenge, you know? It's, it's living rent-free in my head. So anyways, I sent it to a bus. I took out a lot of the effects for the sake of being able to play the beat properly during this video, of course. But the most prominent effects are chorus, un-EQ, portal, which is really just granulizing my effect, uh, which is which is what you hear, heard in preview, of course, and shaper box. So basically, I decided to save a lot of time and a lot of effort. I processed a little bit individually, of course, and then I sent it to a bus to process it all together, glue it all together, and that's how I got my sample. My drum plan for this beat was super straightforward. I got my kicks and my hats from Prod by Jack's kit. It's because it's my go-to kit at this point because the sounds are hard hitting, they are leveled properly, and they just always do the trick. So Prod by Jack, if you ever come across this video, this drum kit is a blessing. Thank you, I'll be using it for many years to come. Um, and I decided to, to grab a typical trap snare from the Ford and Tech kit. So my drum sounds is basically this. Oh, that one I'm not using, but you know, y'all get the gist. I set my tempo to 95 BPM, basic um, kind of a boom bapish tempo, but it's also the tempo that Bryson Tiller often uh, has his slower beats set to, uh, think of Exchange, for example, uh, and her is also pretty comfortable with this tempo as well. So I thought that was a good middle ground. So this is the drum beat that I eventually decided to go for.
so let's talk about the bass just a little bit. You can see that my bass, you know, judging from the notes, is a lot more melodic. I feel that often we think we get we have it easy. We just play the root notes of the chords and we call it a day, and often that works. But if you decide to introduce your bass as a melodic layer of its own, your beat just becomes so much more full. I mean, you see live bass players. They do not start. They are playing licks. They are playing riffs. They are equally as important as, say, a top melody. And that's something that I decided to go for in this beat as well, especially for the vibe that I'm trying to create, which is a more intimate late night setting, which is how I identify most of Bryson Tiller's beats, and her has a fair share of songs like that as well. So the last thing I did, beautiful people, just a quick little finishing touch. I decided to introduce like a really vibey intro. So what I did, I half-timed, uh, I set up a half-time, I set up a fruity paramedic EQ. I turned them both into automation clip, and you can see that I'm actually, uh, wow, I forgot the name for this, but I set up a pattern for the low-pass filter for my EQ, and I just gradually had my half-time uh, lowered until it returns to the original tempo. So that sounds just like this. That concludes our breakdown, beautiful people, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Hell, I sure hope y'all did, because I did, and I hope to see y'all in the next video, of course, but I want to say that I hope that this video was educational for y'all and gave some more insights in how I like to produce samples and how I like to make Bryson Tiller type beats and how I approach that, of course. So if you liked it, like, share, and subscribe, run and tell all your friends, of course, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.